Hey y'all, welcome back to Ag With Emma. Today's video is going to cover grain bag details, the bags that we used up in North Dakota. So we're still posting wheat harvest content because that's just how she rolls around here. I am in a cornfield right now though. It's like the 21st or 20th of September. I can't remember what day it is. I know it's a Tuesday. No, it's a Wednesday. Anyway, harvest brain. Um, we're gonna have grain bag details and then some other odds and ends in this video that I thought were interesting or cool to see. So, hope you enjoy it. I'll catch you at the end. So, if you watched my last video, we put a different tire on my grain cart because I screwed up the last one with the rim. So, the tire pressure was a little low the morning we checked it. We just had to make sure there was no leaks. There we go. Chugging away. The terrain out here makes me miss flat fields. So it doesn't look like much on camera, but this is some sketchy stuff to drive a grain cart all over and combine. So we were working in between tree lines and I decided to throw my drone up and I should have been a little more careful because right about there, oh, I flew my drone into a tree and luckily the camera was still on so I was able to find it based on where I watched it fly in. So my drone is unharmed and the camera still works, it's still good. I've flown it since then but I just thought that was funny. On to the next, just wait for it, everyone's gonna start coming out of here. And another one. And another one. And another one. <laughs> oh, and another one. They're all rolling out. That is a beautiful sight to see. And there's another grain cart over there unloading, so. Go to the next field. If that view don't give you the chills, I don't know what else will. You're probably broken. Ugh. I love watching all the combines head down the road. It's just such a, I don't know what kind of feeling it is, but I love it. And then since we have the worst luck with tires, um, we had a flat on the combine that we had to deal with. So we had to air that bad boy up before we got going for the day. And then in that last clip, you see Slim spraying the tire with soap water, and that's to find the holes because when you spray that water on there, it bubbles, and then you're able to find the hole and plug the hole. And then I'll have a close-up really quick here of like showing you guys how that air bubbles when you spray soap water on it, in case you haven't seen that. In case you haven't fixed tires and know what I'm talking about, right there. See how that soap is bubbling? Because we're waiting to plug it. All right, it is September 6th. We only have a couple hundred more acres, so we're gonna be done today. Crossing our fingers, knocking on wood. Um, hopefully I didn't just jinx it. But we just found the rim number for the new tire and rim that we need. And we found that up by the valve stem here. I'll show you. That number for the rim we found right there. It's engraved into the rim. Um, so we're gonna need another rim, another tire. And then we're gonna replace this one so it looks better again, it all matches, and it's the right rim, because, you know, not good to probably leave that one on there. And we haven't been loading it fully because all that weight is resting on the hub, because everything else I included in that last little segment about that. So they'll be back to matching, hopefully. And last night, the bagger tractor broke down. So we have another bagger tractor. <laughs> it's a mess. So there's the old bagging tractor. There's the new bagging tractor. <laughs> uh, the transmission uh, took a kaput on that, so 
It's the last day. We're gonna be okay. I'm glad they had an extra tractor sitting around. So now they've got a little 6195R tractor. She's pretty small. But she's still working. Looks a little uh, shinier than that old case. There's the last three passes. Now I get to tell you all about grain bags. So this is the grain bag currently being dumped in. That's the bagger and we're gonna get into details right now. So that bag comes in a box and it weighs about 1,000 pounds, 900-ish. It comes on a pallet. They have a bunch of bags and you gotta get up, like we load it up on a pickup and then they push it off of the pickup. It takes several amounts of manpower to get it turned around and lifted back up. So the bag is in that box. They cut the box open, there's the bag. They gotta pull it the right way, and if they don't pull it the right way, they have to drag it. So they open the, that fold up the wrong way, so they're gonna have to drag it here in a second. They're all gonna get on that and pull it so that it lines up with the bagger. Like so. And then they have a remote that lets up that, I don't know if it's called a winch or a pulley or we're just gonna call it the pulley with the bar thingy the jigger, okay? That's I'm an English. <laughs> I've heard the name of it a million times, but I'm like, it's the pulley with the bar thingy. That is gonna lower to the ground and they are going to lift the bag up on top of it. So that again is all controlled by the remote. Once that is on the ground, they're going to lift the bag onto the pulley with the bar thingy the jigger. And you get it all situated up on that. I tried to help, but I was pulled out my camera. So one hand is not too much help when you have five guys around. And then after they get the bag up, they're gonna lift that pulley with the bar thingy back up. <laughs> and then you have to get that bag around the sides right there. So we'll show you that in a second. Like so, it goes around the sides and you could do your best to push it on there without crinkling it all up. That tarp that's on the ground rolls back under the bagger to help keep that bag in there. So they roll the tarp out to assist in putting the bag on, I assume, unless there's another purpose. See, that rolls right back up in there. It keeps it straight, I'm assuming. Keeps everything nice and tidy, hopefully. And then after that, I'll show you what it looks like behind. So this is uh, in between the bagger and the tractor. So the tractor is right behind me while I was recording that shot. They take the strings off of the bag, like so. That's important. You can't forget any on the bottom because then it messes things up. And then they back up that bagger to the other bag that we had started already. And if you're starting a bag in a new field, then they just start it somewhere flat and level so that it doesn't mess things up. You pull the bag out from under those flaps, see right there, so that it will come out. And then someone is going to climb in there after we pull this all out. So that's how the bag starts. See, it like it's a whole bag. And then he's gonna climb in there, make sure everything's straightened out, flat, and the flaps are going over the bagger those little flaps on the bottom, right there. Crank it up! 
after that's all situated, he, like he said, crank it up, it happens every time. And then he put a board under and over the end of that bag while you fold in the edges like so. So you can see how those are kind of folded inwards like that. It keeps it from spilling out of the sides because you fold it over itself. You screw those boards together and then that is the start slash end of the bag. These bungee cords also hold the tarp to the bagger and make sure it comes out straight. Sometimes there's issues with this, but it just hooks under the bagger right there. So that keeps it flush against the metal kind of thing. Just helps it fill out better. You gotta have a pretty full cart to fill the bag up. Um, and then you just keep filling it. And those boards, we rolled it a couple times under the bag and then the tractor move forward a little more and then we put it right on top of the old bag so that's how that works the boards keep it sealed shut and from stuff getting in there or grain falling out hopefully in one foot of this so that distance there is 70 bushels in one foot of bag that's crazy and then after we were all done, I made everyone line up for a good little shot. So there's representation, all the equipment we used, all the people, plus a few pickups and a couple lots of wrenches. <laughs> and then since we finished, we take the equipment and blow it off. We disconnect the headers, blow off the grain cart, blow off the combines, and then we're ready to roll back to the yard. All blown off, ready to back to the yard, take off the headers for road mode, blow the headers off, spiffy. Now we're gonna backtrack a little bit if you guys remember this. It was a couple videos ago, I'll link it, but we're gonna show you what's going on with this grain cart in the shop to fix it. Now that's not much until you start pouring the heat to it. <laughs> So that's what you guys use to cut that hole out. Yeah, we cut it out and then it shrunk a little bit just enough to make it come out. It's right there. <laughs> so you use that tool because if you didn't put a hole through that, when you put a hole through that, it shrinks the steel and then they could jack, use a 50 ton jack on this. So they just welded this in and then it pushed out easier because that wasn't moving without a hole in it. So that's why they put a hole in it. Then they could put the 50 ton jack on it and that one and then pop it out. Because that's what was stuck after the grain cart took a dump. And then this thing was a pain in the butt to get off because those stud holes that we had to drill a little bit bigger, those were pretty tight going on. So getting it off was even more of a challenge and we got it off eventually. It just took a little bit more than a regular tire taker offer would take. So we got her off. We're gonna go hook up the boom truck, hook up the trailer, take this one back out to the old cart and then our new tire and rim will be here soon. I had to drill holes in this. That's what made it so hard to get off because it was pretty tight going on there. But the threads are all still good, so. And then once we took the tire off, we found another problem. I don't know if I did this or not. I don't think I did, but maybe. Um, this is on the tandem, so it's right behind the tire, like inside of it, but we had to weld that back together. So the guy in the shop, fixed her up for us and I'll just show you. Right now he's cleaning it so when you weld things together you got to make sure the metal is clean and that's what he's doing with that grinder. Um, it looks like that. He took another little tool and made it the way that it is right there. And then he's welding it together right there. Don't look at weld lights with your eyes without a camera because it will be bad. And then you welded it together. So 
it's all fixed. Just want to share with you guys really quick what it's like to follow a combine. Oh my gosh. I, uh, you see that like lean in it? So when we loaded it, it was leaning a little to the right. And whenever he hits a turn that curves to the right, it, uh, <laughs> it tips over even more. And uh, I have to sit back here and watch him go through all these bumps. Uh, it makes me sick to my stomach. I, I don't know how people do this and not get nauseous or like, oh, I feel like I'm turning green. I just, watching that combine just tip this way enough to, and there's no shoulder on the road. So whenever a car's coming at you, you can't get over enough. Like the car has to get in the ditch because if you get too far in the ditch, you're gonna, but we can't go on another road because there's a width restriction or something. So that's just something to keep in mind, I guess. It's something I never would have thought about because I asked Slim, I was like, why are we going this way? He's like, well, we can't because there's a width restriction in the road or something like that. A bridge or a dam or something you couldn't cross over. <sighs> so we have to alter travel plans based on how big our equipment is for oversized loads. Just in case you didn't know that. We finally got our grain car tire. So it took two weeks for it to get to us and we started moving before we even got it back. But we have the new rim. New tire, the grain cart is good to go, and we are all moved down to Nebraska. All right, that's all I have for y'all for this video. Remember, I am on all other social media platforms at Ag with Emma, and then I also have a P.O. box, so if you guys want to send me graduation announcements, letters, harvest pictures, I love seeing that kind of stuff, and we will catch you on the next video about corn silage. I'm so excited to share that one with you guys because that's so much fun. So, as always, until next time, hasta la pasta.